I refuse to acknowledge Jesus Christ. Galatians 5, 17. Galatians 5, 17. If we look at the text in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17, he says, I'm going to back up to verse 16. It says, he's talking to the church in Galatia, Paul, and he says, but I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, that's the walk, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. The Spirit and the flesh are in opposition. So which side are you going to lean to? Even though you have a fleshly body, you need to master the art of disciplining your body. Amen. You need to master the art of telling your body no. Amen. Remember Paul says, but I buffet my body to make it my slave. Problem is, Many of us, our bodies are buffeting us to make us its slave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your body want to go get it. Your body need to go get it. That's what you feel like saying it. That's what you feel like doing it. God says when that comes across you, that's what I feel like. Does it line up with the will of God? No, don't do it. That's what I want to say. Does it line up with the will of God? No, don't do it. That's what I feel like doing. Wait a minute. This is what I want to do. Okay, before I just succumb to what the flesh is telling me. Okay, the flesh is telling me to go and do this. Do this. Lord, does your word say do it? Your word says, the spirit says that this is not what I'm supposed to do. The spirit says that if I trust in God, I would be compelled and empowered to do the things that give God glory and not the flesh. So if the flesh and the spirit are opposing each other, then I need to go with what is right, which is spiritual, and throw out that which is wrong, which is fleshly. If you're not able to do that, then you got a lot more growing to do. Yeah. And God is going to challenge you over and over again until you are able to toss out the flesh. Till you are able to trust him enough to allow the spirit to take over. This is simply a fact of being fleshly. And in your walk with Jesus Christ, if you are not getting more spiritual as you walk this walk, as you run this race, as the Bible calls it, then there's a problem. There's a problem. If you look the same tomorrow as you did today, something's wrong somewhere. All right. All right. You need to evaluate your walk with Christ. I can't tell you what's wrong. All I can say to you is that there is a insubmission problem somewhere. All right. Somewhere. And until you get a grasp of, until you get a hold of the fact that some area in your life is refusing to submit to God, the flesh is going to continue to win out. It's going to continue to win out. Taking a look back at the text, it says, Wretched man that I am. Wretched man that I am. So now, Paul is throwing his hands up in there. He's like, I want to do this, but I can't. Sin's got a hold of me, even though I'm saved by grace. This is anguish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is driving me crazy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is causing me to scream. It's causing me to holler out. It's causing me to cry in the midnight hour. It's causing me to do all kinds of things. I feel wretched. Because I know what's right and I keep doing wrong. Wretched man that I And if your Bible is like mine, it has an exclamation mark there. He says, wretched man that I am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. 
Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. Peter is talking to the churches in the, in the Asia Minor region, several churches, and he's saying, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lust, which wage war against the soul. Put your hand up like this. Do that. You can cut another string. Abstain. 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 You know what abstain means? Abstain means to stay away from. Abstain means to, 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 to don't go around. It says abstain from fleshly lusts, which wage war against the soul. That means if it's something you want and you know you're not supposed to have it, put it out of your mind. Tell yourself no. Resign it, write it up, chalk it up to, that's not mine. I don't need that right now. Abstain from fleshly lust. Stay away from fleshly lust. And if the lust is coming through the eyes, simple. Close your eyes. Turn the channel. Look the other way. Because the devil knows how to snare many of us. He gets many of us through what we see. I'm going to tell you right now, men, if what you wear is designed to snare you, look the other way. Amen. Women, if what he's wearing is designed to get your attention and make you babble, look the other way. Amen. We battle not against flesh and blood. You battle the devil in what you see. It says abstain from fleshly lust. And cut that other string that the devil uses to control you with. Abstain. Abstain. Many of us can't abstain. If it's coming in through the ears, turn it off. Turn to another station. Get out of hearing distance of the person spouting that sin off. I tried to look at, we have I like comedy, like 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 the, like like the next person. I like stand up comedy. I love Bill Cosby. Amazes me how a man can be comical without using profanity Amen. and still make you laugh with the simple things in life. I grew up liking Richard Pryor too. Amen. Tell the truth, shame the devil. So I say, you know what? I like saying I'm coming. Let me, let me, I should have known better. Thinking fleshly and not spiritually. We got this system in our house where we got a wireless network and, and you can go into Netflix and pull up basically anything you want to see. So I saw Mike Epps <laughs> and his comedy show. And I turned it on. And as I started watching it, Every, not literally every other word, but almost every word was MF, 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 MF. Oh man, this ain't no good. I don't, it just don't sound right anymore. Turn it off. Amen. Then I saw another one. I said, well, maybe this would have been a little cleaner. Should have known better. <laughs> Wishing for something that ain't really there. Right. Go with what the Lord is telling you. All right, all right. So I thought this should kill O'Neill. Basketball all-star comedy jam or whatever it was. And Monique was in charge of it. And she got to talking. She was worse than my gifts. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, so I turned it off. Then I'm like, Lord, I can't look at this no more because all this evil is being perpetrated and it's coming into my mind. It's coming into my heart. So I can't watch this crap no more. Amen. I'm not saying it ain't funny. I'm saying it ain't spiritual. Yes, it's funny. But no, it is not spiritual. And if it's not spiritual, I'm not feeding the spirit. I'm feeding the flesh. And when I feed the flesh, I'm feeding death. When I feed death, there is no eternal life. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. So I couldn't find no more comedy shows. I've seen all the Bill Cosby. I had to turn it off. I had to turn it off. I love watching movies like The Next Person. Some of the good movies got too much profanity and cursing and nudity in it. And you know what? Where I liked it years ago, now I'm convicted by it. If it's got too much, I'm an adult. I can only put up with so much of that. If it's got too much, let me turn it off. You're letting demons into your house. You're letting demons yes. into your mind. Yes. You're letting demons yes. into your heart. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Right. And you become numb. And when you see it acting out in your house, you impotent to say anything about it because you've allowed it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Cut another string. Amen. Cut another string. <laughs> Wretched man that I am. Who will set me free from the body of this death? Go down to chapter 8 and verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. Who will set me free from this body of death? It's the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ. Right. Has set you free. What else sets you free? The truth shall make you free. What is the truth? The word is true. Who is the word? The word is Jesus Christ. So you need Jesus in order to cut all these strings Amen. of bondage that the devil got you in under sin. Amen. So that you can go left when God say go left and go right when God say go right. All right, all right, all right. You're not a slave. God is in charge. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. Turn to Romans. No, 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 no. Stay there. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, on the one hand, he's reminding you again. He's giving thanks to God. He's saying that Jesus is in control. We got power in front of Jesus, but he don't want you to forget the situation. He don't want you to forget the state that you're still living in. Because if you forget the state that you're in, you become complacent. And if you become complacent, you start falling back to the things that you once did before. And God don't want you to be complacent. He says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, on the one hand, I got victory. I myself, with my mind, am serving the law of God. That's a hallelujah statement, church. I am serving the law of God. I am succumbing to the Holy Spirit. I'll let God within my life. But he says, don't forget that your spirit is still stuck within this fleshly body. He says, but on the other hand, with my flesh, the law of sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Know what that means, church? Yeah. That means until God calls you home, yeah. right. you're going to be in warfare against sin. Yeah. You're going to be battling sin. Don't think that this war is won down here. It's not going to be won down here. Amen. Victory of that war down here is making sure that you walk the straight and narrow as much as you possibly can to give God the glory. So when he calls you home and he judges you, he will judge you based upon the fact that your confession in Jesus Christ was not just verbal, but it was a spiritual confession by faith that nothing is going to derail you from riding the train of faith into heaven. That's how God moves, church. Yes, yes. That's how he moves. Yes. So what the ultimate outcome is? Hmm. You need to be more in the spirit hmm. and less in the flesh. Hmm. You need to have more spirit in you and less flesh. Hmm. All right. Make sure that the scales of your salvation is tilted to spiritual. To spiritual. Evaluate everything in the spirit. Whatever it is, place God's spiritual context of his word on top of it. Whatever it is, before you respond, place it under the microscope of spirituality. Mm -hmm. right. Stop knee-jerking in your responses. Right. Stop reconciling your responses and that's how I feel. Huh. Mm -hmm. God like, you're going to feel worse than that because you <laughs> overwriting what I told you. Talking about, oh, God, forgive me. Right. Hmm. You know it's wrong. 
You're letting that sin puppet take control. And God is saying, be careful who, who, who's really in charge here. Because if you don't cut them strings, I'm not going to have a string attached to you while the devil has three. I'm not going to have a string attached to you the devil has one. You're going to have to cut all those demonic strings for me to take over. That's how God reconciles wretches. We have to live more spiritual and less fleshly. Heavenly Father.